Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Sense and Sensibility, starring Kate Winslet, Emma Thompson, Hugh Grant, and Alan Rickman, directed by Ang Lee. Now before I get into this movie, I remember seeing the VHS tape at my mother's uh, VHS collection. Never watched it until, I want to say, a year or two ago, um, and this will be my second and third time for this viewing, so... And I know Ang Lee from movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Hulk, obviously, which I reviewed. And there was a couple of others, but I don't remember his filmography all that well. Maybe one day I'll get there, but let's just get into this movie. We open with John Dashwood sitting with his father, Mr. Dashwood, played briefly by Tom Wilkinson as he dies, which made me sad because Tom Wilkinson did just die fairly recently as he gives his well will to his ex-wife and their two daughters, Marianne, played by Kate Winslet, Eleanor, played by Emma Thompson, and Margaret, while jo John and his wife, Fanny, come to the house as they take their home, and they have to move away, which I guess is a law back in the day, while Fanny brings over her brother, Edward Ferrars, played by Hugh Grant, and I'm having problems with this movie at this point. Take it from someone who is not a fan of Jane Austen in general, as I can't follow her, any of her stories except for Pride and Prejudice. That's the only one I can follow at best. But the acting is very good, and the movie is well made, and director Ang Lee does good work from this to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon to a movie I reviewed before Brokeback Mountain to Life of Pi, which I will review one day. And he does shoot the movie very well in England, as the man is from Taiwan. And he knows how to make a movie look beautiful. Like when I, I'll talk about it when I get to Life of Pi. But Edward talks with Marianne about how he hates London, as there's no peace there. And goes horseback riding with Eleanor and entertains the women. And part of the reason why I'm not a Hugh Grant fan is because he always plays the romantic lead. And I don't really find him charming in any movie in general, as lately he's from a couple of Guy Ritchie films to Paddington 2, which I reviewed where he plays the bad guy. He could work in those roles, but in general, I hear the guy is a jerk in real life, as his stuff from the 1990s and 2000s is a bit overrated in my opinion. Like Notting Hill, I, and i never seen Love Actually, so I take it from someone who's not the biggest fan. But they read a story, and Marianne kind of insults him in the middle of reading with the family. And she says to Eleanor she likes him to sh like she's in love with him. So that kind of bothered me, but it's part of the story, so I'll give th him that. And the characters are fine at best, but it's just sometimes I can't follow this kind of movie because of their accents being thick. And again, not a Jane Austen fan. The Dashwood women move to a new location, and Thomas and Betsy visit them in their new home, as well as their doggy doggies. And the cinematography in this location is, this whole movie is absolutely beautiful. And this is a beautiful, it, well not, well okay, this is a gorgeous looking movie in my opinion. They get settled in their new home as they get bob bathed and dressed for lunch with Thomas and Betsy, and Marianne gets up to leave the table until Colonel Brandon, played by Alan Rickman, shows up to the house while Marianne plays the piano as he watches it. And I like seeing Alan Rickman in anything from his first appearance here to the first Die Hard to Galaxy Quest to even the Harry Potter films, which I have reviewed before. And I do miss seeing him in the movies as he may be the best character in the mo whole movie. And that's not telling anybody much. Marianne and Margaret go for a walk and Marianne hurts her ankle until Margaret finds John Willoughby and he takes them home and brings Marianne home to be hospitalized and the Dashwood women thinks John to being in his service and is this the best acting by these actors probably not as Alan Rickman is the best thing about the movie in my opinion Colonel Brandon and John Briggs or yeah John Briggs Marianne Flowers or should I say John W., let's call him for the rest of the show, Marianne Fl brings Marianne flowers as Marianne is curious about John W. as Colonel Brandon leaves the house with Sir John. As John W. comes to the house and Marianne reads this, some Shakespeare in a book, 
and she's charmed by John W. And I'm having a hard time paying attention to this movie, as this is the m most I've paid attention to what was happening on screen, as there were times the movie just bored me, and it's not because it's bad, as this is, like I said, a beautiful-looking movie, but like I said earlier, but Colonel Brandon notices John W. is flirting with Marianne, while Eleanor believes something is wrong with him as Colonel Brandon asks Marianne and Eleanor to a picnic along with John W. as he picks her up for their date, and Colonel Brandon tells Eleanor he is in love with Marianne, and we move on to Charlotte Palmer, played by Imelda Staunton, and when I first saw her on screen, I was like, oh, God, she's in this? As she's been annoying me since Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and I'm still annoyed by her at this point. And while Colonel Brandon comes in hysterically as he has to go to London, and John W. takes them all out for a picnic, and we learn John W. and Colonel Brandon don't like each other very much because Colonel Brandon threat is threatened by John W. or threatened John W. with rain while fighting in a war together. And I couldn't tell when we first saw them on screen together. Well, I could tell, actually, because it's that obvious. It's not that funny. Mrs. Dashwood, Eleanor, and Margaret go to church while Marianne receives upsetting news from John W. as he has to go back to London as Marianne was pregnant with his baby, which it I didn't get as it took me a trip to IMDb to find that out while Marianne is depressed. And Mr. Palmer, played briefly by Hugh Laurie, will, while the other members of the family play card games, and we learn John W. has been engaged for the past five years from a conversation with Eleanor and Lucy Steele, and they talk about how London and Mrs. Jennings invites Marianne and Eleanor to, is, and Marianne is excited about it, as she wants to see John W., and unfortunately, I just don't care at this point, as my attention was half on this movie. And I still can't follow the story at this point. As they arrive in London, Marianne is anxious to see John W., and she opens the door to see John W., but sees Colonel Brandon to confirm some rumors he heard about Marianne and John W., as Colonel Brandon is depressed about it, while Marianne wants to hear from John W., but doesn't but doesn't, and she ends up depressed because of it, and they go to a party in, with Fanny and Robert Ferrars, and Eleanor and Lucy dance with him until Marianne sees John W. and have a brief talk, and explains why he hasn't responded to her, and he says and sees he's with another woman, and she becomes very depressed and gets her home, and the, writes an angry letter to John W. as he writes saying he's engaged to the other woman, and she becomes depressed. Once again, is there a reason this keeps repeating itself? Because it was getting on my nerves at this point. Colonel Brandon comes by to see how Marianne is doing and hears about what John W. has done to her. As we move on to Edward seeing Eleanor, Lucy, and Marianne, and he learns she hates London just as much as he does. And the cinematography looks beautiful in the interior as well as the exterior. Edward takes Lucy home as she gets kicked out of it because she's engaged to Edward, and Lucy says in an earlier scene with Eleanor, and not telling anybody about it, and the dialogue is written fine, but it's not my favorite writing. Eleanor takes, talks with Colonel Brandon about Lucy's engagement to Edward, and gives Eleanor some advice to tell Edward to tell him and Lucy to not marry each other, and it upsets him as Marianne, Eleanor, Mr. Palmer, and Charlotte go to the house and see Colonel Brandon as Marion has a baby named Thomas while she runs away outside while it's a stormy day. And eventually Colonel Brandon finds her in a garden and brings her back home and to get warm and she's freezing cold and they get to a doctor to check up on her and everybody leaves until the doctor's orders except for Eleanor and Colonel Brandon as well as the doctor while Colonel Brandon fetches to their mother for Marianne and brings her to the house while she sleeps for days until one day Marion wakes up and Mrs. Dashwood arrives thanks to Colonel Brandon as Marion thanks him for bringing her mother to the house and they arrive home and with Margaret as Colonel Brandon reads to Marion and she has to talk with Eleanor or a talk let's say and we get a maintenance man named Thomas sound familiar as he fixes this chimney, and he says Edward married Lucy, 
And suddenly Eleanor is depressed, and Edward comes to the house and visits Eleanor as they talk about how he and Lucy's wedding never happened. And Eleanor is sad about it, and Edward says to her, her his heart will forever be hers, and he proposes marriage to her, and they get married as well as Marianne and Colonel Brandon as John W. watches from a distance. As he takes off, and the climax was all right, and I feel bad to say this, but this may be the weakest of the Columbia classics I like as so far. I haven't disliked any of them yet. Now it's time for my rating. I'll give this movie a 5.3 out of 10. Don't get me wrong, it's well shot as the cinematography looks beautiful, as this is a gorgeous looking, gorgeous looking movie, but unfortunately I couldn't follow the story as I'm not a Jane Austen fan. And the characters were fine at best, but it was just sometimes it was very hard to understand their thick accents. I was having a hard time paying attention to the movie as I was bored, but it wasn't bad either, as the movie was alright. I mean, I wouldn't put this back on my 4K Blu-ray player, and the acting is adequate as Alan Rickman is maybe the best thing about the movie in my opinion. This is perhaps the weakest Columbia Classics, which is a shame because I tried so hard to give it a higher rating than I did. But this wasn't my favorite, as this was this is as it's the weakest mild recommendation I have to give a classic, and I feel bad about it as it's too long of nothing happening. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with It Happened One Night. And until then, I cannot accept this story.